gentle hum of an air conditioner, so I'm glad that's working. <laughs> <laughs> it's gentle. You can barely hear it. It's very, very subtle. <laughs> I have a fan going, too. <laughs> Hi there, everyone. My name is Max, and I'd like to thank you all on behalf of Fremont's Bookstore for tuning into today's event with us. Today, we're lucky to have with us Jory John and Liz Climo, who will be talking about their books, Summer Camp Critter Jitters. Uh, Jory John is the author of multiple books for children and adults, including New York Times bestselling The Terrible Two and The Bad Seed as well as the popular Penguin Problems and E.B. White read aloud on her book, Good Night Already. He lives in Oregon with his wife currently. And Liz Climo is an author, illustrator, and cartoonist. She grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area and moved to LA after college to work as a character artist on The Simpsons. She has written and illustrated several books, including the Roy the Dinosaur series and Please Don't Eat Me. And she currently lives in Los Angeles with her husband and daughter. Today's event does include a Q&A portion, so if you'd like to ask Jory or Liz a question at any point, you go ahead and click that Ask a Question button towards the bottom, and they will get to that towards the end of the event. And lastly, if you would like to purchase their book, you can go ahead and click that green button right down below, and it'll take you to our website. But with that all out of the way, I will go ahead and let them take over. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, tuning in, everybody. I um, I am so excited to be here, and uh, I'm so excited to be here with you, Liz. And I'm excited I, to be here too with you, Jory. I can't see anything, <laughs> um, including for some reason uh, I can't see myself. I can't see uh, you. Um, I was going to say it's great to see your face, but all I see is a green box. But um, you know, we roll with the punches with technology, right? <laughs> and uh, you know, it's it's great to see this green box. Is all yes. I can say. <laughs> I, so I can see everything and hopefully everybody watching right now can see everything. Jory, I'll go ahead and let you know if anything weird like pops into your screen or if you have anything in your teeth. But as of right now, you look perfect. <laughs> you don't need to worry. You're fine. Oh, yeah. I forgot <laughs> to check my hair. Yeah, no, you're I, great. <laughs> okay, cool. Do you mind if I run and get some floss real quick? Um, yeah, go ahead. Or, no, we should just we should probably just go forward with this. It's right? fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's well, thank you, bro. You're good. <laughs> I mean, it's just so funny because um, I always feel like, uh, you know, um, with all these new platforms, you know, I'm just going to come in and breeze in and it's it's just going to go smoothly. But I feel like just uh, just being able to hear your voice is is, <laughs> is wonderful, honestly, Liz. Um, <laughs> well, and, yeah, I, I wanted to say thanks to Romans for having us, too, because, gosh, what a bookstore, the best of the best. And I understand you're a regular at Romans, Liz. I love Romans. They're my neighbor. I've been, I've had a lot, a lot of events there, both in person and, and virtual, and they're the best. And I'm very happy to be here today. And um, I'm happy to to be here with you. And yeah, thank you so much, Romans. This is this is exciting. And we're gonna we're gonna figure this out, even if 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 the technical support is not on our side, the, the, <laughs> the technology is not on our side. We're still gonna figure it out. It'll be fine. <laughs> So, uh, so anyway, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we hear there are about 4 billion people in 50 different countries. I, I'm not sure if that's, if I got the stats right, but. No, that's um, correct. Oh, it is. Yeah. 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 It's, <laughs> it's rivaling the Oscars, right? Um, yes. <laughs> so Liz and I um, have done three books now together and I brought them. Uh, the first one oh. is called, Can Somebody Please Scratch My Back? And uh, the next one, it's called First Day Critter Jitters, and that is the first of the Critters books. This is about the first day of school. And then our latest book, Summer Camp Critter Jitters. Yay! And, yes, and they're all available at Romans. And possibly, I don't want to make any promises here, possibly signed by at least one of us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They will yeah. definitely be signed by me as of, I think it's Tuesday. <laughs> I have the email, <laughs> but yeah, they will be, there will be, um, Sign books in house as of early next week. I could walk. It's very close. I'm not going to. I'm going to drive, but it's a very close. <laughs> it's a very close drive. <laughs> um, I don't blame you, honestly. I, I don't know if I've complained about this yet, but um, so I'm in Portland right now, and it's uh, it's going to be 106 today. And yeah. uh, this is slightly off topic, but I think it's actually slightly on topic because we're talking about camp today. And uh, oh yeah, I spent a lot of days in, at camp in 100 degree weather, and. Um, so we live in a house that was built in 1927 and there's no air conditioning. <laughs> and so we bought one, um, that, but it, it heats, I mean, it cools about this much space. So, um, so that's it's, a, that's it's sort cool. of like you're in a tent with a tiny fan, yes. like a tiny portable fan. Is that sort of, <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> right. Yeah. So if anybody wants to come up and hang out, it's going to be 106 today. <laughs> and, uh, and all I'm seeing are green boxes. And I actually, you know, maybe that, maybe there's a connection there. Now that I think about it, maybe we're all just green, green boxes. For <laughs> this is finally the matrix. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
anyway, um, we're talking about summer camp critter journey. Yes. Liz, do you do you you have some camp experience, right? I do. I have. Um, so I never went to like sleepaway camp, but I did do a family camp. Um, there was a camp that I grew up going to called Mountain Meadow Resort, which is in the Trinity Alps in way north California. Um, it was great. It was the whole place was run on a generator. So at 10 o'clock, it was pitch black. It's really the only time in my life that I've really seen stars. And I, I mean, of course, you see stars and in L.A. you see like four or so. But this was like there was more star in the sky than there was darkness. It, it was just amazing. Um, so, yeah, wow. that was a very I have very, very positive um, memories and happy memories from from there for sure. That sounds like a lovely experience. It was great. And how about you, Jory? You have yeah. some experience as well, right? Yeah, I went to a, a lot of different camps as a kid. Um, the one I went to the most is a performing arts and circus camp in Northern California called Camp Winter Rainbow. And uh, it's a very cool. Camp. Yeah. Yeah, you kept and, that in uh, your back pocket. You didn't. You didn't prep me at all. I didn't. You were like, "Yeah, I went to camp when we talked on the phone," but I didn't know it was like that. Kind, that's amazing. <laughs> that's hey, Jory, yeah. Jory, real quick, yeah, real quick. This is Max with Romans. I work part time at Camp Winter Rainbow. Whoa! What? Yeah, my friend Natalie. She grew up there. She grew up in Berkeley. Whoa. She was there every summer, and she that, invited. I know Natalie. That's, what? Crazy. Oh, that, that's so crazy. Okay, keep going. I'm sorry. That's just <laughs> wow. Small world, green box. <laughs> Waiting for any sort of response. Really, I feel like I'm hanging out in a room by myself right now. Can you can you hear me laughing, Jory? I'm laughing at you. Uh, not at you, but with oh, you. Oh, for sure, and for at, sure. Okay, no, good. I, should, I could pull up um, GarageBand and just have a little laughter effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's crazy, though, Max. And, uh, yeah, so I went there as a kid, and I just sort of ended up working there Um through college really. And uh, it's a really neat camp and, and I learned a lot there. And it's just this really supportive place where basically, um, you know, it's like one of those places where you get up on stage and you do, you, say you juggle one ball and everyone claps and it's just the most supportive environment. Aww. And I was an only child. So I went there and sort of learned to be around, like live around, you know, a group of 12 other kids at a time. And um, yeah, the whole thing was just, really sort of formative for me and i i ended up teaching there too so uh maybe maybe there'll be a, a slight um <laughs> even though i can't see it but a, there'll be a slight lesson later from that camp that i will bring, bring oh, to this event i, I can't yes. wait <laughs> <laughs> i yeah i have um, to say, but, yeah go ahead oh go ahead I, I was just gonna add that like it, i have to say you know we're, we're still in this kind of weird like transitional, hopefully pandemic sort of state and, you know, doing this event virtually. Um, my daughter ha is seven and she um, was not in camp or school in person at all last year. And she just started or just finished a week uh, of, at a camp called BioCitizen in Los Angeles. And, you know, they had oh, masks yeah. and it was all outside and it was very, very, very COVID safe. And um, it was just so nice to see, you know, they'd send photos at the end of the day and she'd come home with like band-aids on her knees and, you know, she'd be okay. But it was just really, really nice to like, see kids out in the wilderness again and getting to like be around each other and being around nature. And I don't know, it was just, that's the it, best. yeah. So it's, it's, it, it's been, this, this feels very um, timely today because we just, yes. been, and I was very nervous. I mean, I was anxious about her going back because, you know, she's just kind of been here all year uh, and you know, you drop them off and then come back six hours later and kind of stand at the uh, clearing in the forest and like cope that they show up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, but it's just great. She she had a wonderful time, and they were such a great camp. And so so yeah, I feel uh, I, I, it, it's nice. I feel like in high spirits right now, talking about talking about summer camp. <laughs> do you, do you think she would want to go back next year? She's already so I only signed her up for a week because I knew it would be a lot of hiking, and I wasn't sure if she would it would be like too intense for her. And she's already like, I want to do I want to do another week. So next year we'll sign her up for an extra couple weeks probably. Uh, but yeah, That's she great. loved it. She absolutely loved it. That's so great. Well, I mean, honestly, like since we since we did this book and even last night, as I was thinking about this event, all these like me memories were flooding back for me from those early days of camp. So I first went when I was 11. So a little bit o older than your daughter. And um, and th there were definitely a lot of sort of jitters, you know, that, that went along with it. And I feel like um, a lot of them are channeled into this. So um, that was a good uh, I think, you know, we, that was a good setup for for what this book turned yeah. out to be, which was. Yeah, all the different all the different worries and stuff. So, I, so Liz and I are going to read um, the book, and as I understand it, it will also be on screen, but I'll also be just yes. reading from this. 
Jory, I'll, I'll let here. I'll let you know once it's up. <laughs> so if we could. I'm not. <laughs> they, I, I'm not in charge of that. So yeah, if we could get the um the PDF up and we can go ahead. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, um, Jory, why don't uh we can once we start? I'll I'll start with the first page so that way you know where we are and then you we can alternate pages if that if that works for you. Love it. I'm okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> So this is our book. This is Summer Camp Critter Jitters. It's a really, really, really funny book that Jory wrote. And I had the pleasure of illustrating. Um, and again, it's just, it's really great for kids and adults. Cause like, again, you know, we're, we're as we send our kids kind of back into the world, uh, it's really, it's really nice to sort of have this little, little gang to sort of help us <laughs> through the, through the anxiety, I guess. So. <laughs> That's good. And by yeah. the way, I don't think the jitters necessarily go away when you're an adult, you know, it's just a different oh, no. form of, not, not for me. Of <laughs> yeah. Whether it's, whether it's an event or whether it's, you know, working in a new job or, you know, so yeah, uh -huh. with that said. All right. Here we go. I'm going to, let's, uh, let's, okay. Am I nervous about the first day of summer camp? Absolutely. After all, it's the wilderness, the wild. What if I have to catch my own lunch out there? I'm so hungry, please come here, Leaf. <laughs> and here we have a skunk. I assume it's on screen. It's on screen, you're good. <laughs> All right, do they tell ghost stories at camp? Because I don't like ghost stories. Let's just say that I have a tendency to <clears throat> smell things up when I'm feeling scared. And the skunk is reading happy stories and there's a lot of air fresheners and such in, <laughs> in his uh, suitcase there. And here's a little imaginary scene. The worst case scenario, skunk is just smelling everything up and everybody's just saying, ew. And the skunk says, oops. I'd never drawn a fart before. That was fun to try and figure that <laughs> Well, I think, I think that um, that is the culmination of our partnership for sure. It's definitely, that yeah, it's definitely the, the sort of the pinnacle of my career, I'd say. <laughs> uh, are there sports at this place? I'm not so great at sports. Trust me. And then he's got this cloud behind him. Ah, everyone's running around screaming because he's pointing an arrow in the air. <laughs> oh, my my eyes are terrible. <laughs> like, <laughs> are you sure I should be doing this? And it's funny. It's funny that my eyes are terrible and I can't read it. And it's the mole whose eyes are also terrible. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> and and by the way, everything everything you drew for that, that uh, <laughs> the mole's packing list with a giant page one is so funny to me. Well, I'm, luckily I can read that because it's big enough that I drew it so big. <laughs> packing list page one, toiletries. <laughs> Please tell me there isn't a lake because if I'm being honest here, I never learned how to swim. Can you imagine being a duck? And never learning how to swim. Well, that's my life, pal. And the duck is on the duck. And he's going, oh, and everyone's swimming around him. And then <laughs> this little guy's going, ah, so refreshing. <laughs> I took swimming lessons at camp, by the way, just for the record. <laughs> in in a lake. Um, anyway, oh. <laughs> here, we, here, here we have the bunny. Is it going to bother anybody if I need to hop around at night? That's usually the only way I get tired enough to fall asleep. And then fast forward to the imagination here and the, the bunny's just hopping bunk to bunk and everyone's saying, hey, and uh, the, the bunny's saying, sorry. <laughs> I'm afraid I won't make any friends. Have you ever bumped into a snake in the forest? It doesn't actually go. It doesn't usually go so well. Everyone's going to run. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to get my copy of the book too because I can't read this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll you want me to take over here? All right. So we have we, here we have the uh Tell me Okay, I'm back. back. I'm back. I'm here. Oh, sorry. I forgot that you you couldn't see me. Okay, here I am. I'm just turning to the page. Yeah, my eyes are terrible. Okay. All right, here we are on the second page. Will I get lost out there because the woods kind of freak me out if I'm being honest. I'm more of an indoor type of bear. Sigh. And the bear's imagining this very creepy forest. This is me, by the way. This is me at camp. I'm the bear. I'm the one freaking out about what's in the woods and, you know, bringing my teddy bear with me and huddled up in a blanket. So. <laughs> You're the bear with it with a dash of the mole. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> I'm a little of each. <laughs> uh, and here we have our kangaroo friend. Um, I was told that I'm supposed to bring a sleeping bag to camp. You know what's way better than a sleeping bag? A pouch. And I already have one of those at home. Imagining the, uh, the sleeping bag covering the top. <laughs> How is this supposed to be comfortable? And then we cut to a parrot. 
what if I can't stop talking while everybody's trying to listen to our counselor? It's a concern. And then the, this uh, imaginary counselor is saying, please be quiet, parrot. And the parrot repeats, please be quiet, parrot. Please be quiet, parrot. Please be quiet, parrot. <laughs> By the way, I like that all of our voices for the different animals are our same voices. Oh That's yeah, <laughs> listen, I, I, <laughs> I'm not, they, I'm not they, a voice person, but I'm, I'm trying to go a little bit higher or lower depending on each animal. <laughs> That's about what I can do. <laughs> oh, are there bunk beds? Will I have to sleep on the top bunk? I don't think I could get to the top bunk or even the bottom <laughs> bunk. And the mouse next to his little matchbox bed here, he's got cheese jerky, cheese trail mix, dehydrated cheese. I mean, those are all snacks I'd eat. That's probably why I drew them. <laughs> and then we've got a huge tall bed that tested my knowledge of perspective, which I really don't know a whole lot about. <laughs> Is this a bed or a tower? I think that looks amazing. Thank you. <laughs> you really, you were, yeah. Well, I'll have some <laughs> questions about it when we get to okay, the, sure. the Q&A part. All right, here we have everybody leaving their respective houses and and uh, trees and so forth. And they're all kind of very tentatively leaving. Uh, the skunk is gulping. Um, here they are sort of solemnly walking and flying single file and walking and hopping and walking. And then they get to the camp bus stop. They're waiting for the camp bus and they all let out a deep sigh. <laughs> and the sighs continue on the next page. Sigh. Sigh. They're walking in to camp super fun. They're all slumped over. They do not look thrilled. And then here we got the bear looking at a creepy dark forest going, oh. <laughs> and then we got the mole. He's, he can see um, two, two friends playing with the ball in the distance. He's saying, gulp. And then the duck sees a very scary looking lake and says, gulp. Poor duck. Poor duck, yeah. So we see the camp super fun flag in a cabin. <clears throat> And the skunk says, okay, here's our cabin, but where's our counselor? The bear says, no idea. The mouse says, seriously, no clue? And then the bunny says, wait, what's that? Up there. And you see this little kitty cat <laughs> in a tree. <laughs> and there's a really sad welcome banner hanging down the trunk. And the duck says, hmm, it seems to be a welcome banner. <laughs> but why is it sideways? <clears throat> so here we have uh, the cat up in the tree. <clears throat> yes, hello there, campers. Can you hear me down there? Welcome to camp. I'm Sammy, your counselor. You can call me Sam. So anyway, I'm really excited to meet all of you. And the bear is saying, whoa, why are you in that tree? Shouldn't you be like down here? And the cat <laughs> continues, well, yes, haha, -ha, as it happens, it's my first year as a counselor. I wanted to make a good impression, so I made this banner. And then I got stuck. So I may just have to be your counselor from up here this summer. Any questions? He's, He's improvising. Like, like, yeah, like you have to improvise today, Jory, and not have to not see any of this. <laughs> you roll with the punches, you know? Sometimes you got to be a counselor from the top of a tree. It makes, <laughs> it makes sense to this cat. And, uh, <laughs> and that's the end. Just kidding. There's more. <laughs> so here we have, I love this illustration so much. It's so funny to me. And, I, and it's just everyone looking up at the cat, pretty confused, pretty deadpan, just sort of waiting to see what happens next. Then the mole says, camp isn't really camp without a counselor. The skunk says, agreed, this isn't good. The bunny says, we've got to rescue that kitty cat. The bear says, but how? The parrot says, but how? And the snake says, let's work together. Now we have everybody all trying to figure out how to make this work. So the duck is saying, we could build a ladder out of branches. And the mole saying, I'll dig up some roots to fasten the branches together. Mouse is saying, I'll use my tiny paws to tie the knots. Skunk says, I'll carry the ladder into place. Snake says, I can hang the other side of the welcome banner with, banner with my fangs. And the bear saying, and um, I guess you need me to get the branches from the woods. Gulp. Bunny saying, don't worry, we'll go out with you. And then the cat who's up in the tree still says, I'll be right here. <laughs> <laughs> Kangaroo is saying, yeah, we'll keep you company. Buddy system. Buddy system. Buddy system. That's a real thing. Buddy system. Yep. Buddy system. Um, here's this <laughs> montage, this little montage of them working well together. So they, they're just, they're, they're rolling with the punches too. They, they go out into the woods, they gather some sticks, they build a ladder, 
here they are building a ladder. They're uh, putting the ladder in place. The snake slither, slithers up the branches. It's hard to say. Um, and then the, <laughs> <laughs> the bear is uh, helping the kitty cat, the poor kitty cat counselor. Here, I'll, I'll help you climb back down. Grab some fur. And then uh, here's the snake finishing hanging the welcome banner that the uh, kitty cat started. We hear almost there, a little to the left. And then finally, the counselor is on the ground. Well, hello, <laughs> campers. It's lovely to meet you up close. You all work together so nicely to rescue me. Thank you. What a swell bonding experience. You're a team now. Also, the banner looks great. I hope you feel <laughs> welcome. Now, without further ado, please let me show you around right this way. I have to give a shout out to uh, my husband, Colin, because I had to I, I had to show him when this was this whole section was roughed out. I was like, does this logistically make sense? Because there's a lot of action and he's really good at storyboarding. He's also he's an animator and um, a director. And so and I don't normally do that sort of action. And so I'm like, does this make sense the way the snake comes up the tree? And so anyway, he, was, he was very helpful. So I was like, this is a lot of business. I have to figure out how to make work. <laughs> it's so good. I and it, I feel like I went through it pretty quick and and. Uh... I think when you get the book, um, I'm talking now to the uh, the viewer here, you should spend at least 10 good minutes on each illustration <laughs> appreciating not only like what Liz did, but the perspective and everything that you just said about Colin. <laughs> yes, don't look too long at the perspective though, and certainly don't use lines to try and make sure it's accurate, okay? All right, the bear is saying the woods are actually kind of nice, plenty of greenery, lots to climb. What was I so afraid of? Bunny's saying yes. Everyone's saying, agreed, totally. And now they're playing chess. Bunny says, nice move. Oh, Colin also helped me with this part because I don't play chess and I needed, and I was actually watching the Queen's Gambit as I did this <laughs> drawing no, and that helped me. So I was able to sort of storyboard, like see on the, the ceiling. No, I don't, I, I don't know if everyone, okay, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'll move on. Oh, thank you. I guess I might like some sport, says the mole. Is chess a sport, says the skunk? Duck's in the water now, and he's floating. He's using the snake as a rat, an inner tube. I'm floating, I'm floating. Hey, everybody, I'm floating. And Snake's saying, and I'm helping my new friends. The others are saying, nice work. Now they're all having a little sing-along. Parrot's playing guitar. Another parrot's playing the guitar, counselor parrot. And he's saying, repeat after me. And then the other parrot's saying, repeat after me. And it's OK, because he's asking him to. So and, now they, <laughs> and now they're all sitting around a campfire. And uh, Bear's saying, can you pass the marshmallows? And the mole's saying, Watching this fire is better than watching TV. Counselor saying, hey everyone, how about a story? And Skunk saying, wait, is this a spooky story? I don't like spooky stories. Uh-oh. All right, uh-oh, what's going on now? And then there's a snap <laughs> in the woods. Hopefully I made some of you jump. There's a snap. <laughs> and the mole says, whoa. And the bear says, did you hear that? And the duck says, yeah, it was like a snapping noise. <laughs> And the snake says, <laughs> maybe it was the wind. And then uh, the skunk says, and this is why I don't like spooky stories. And then there's a, a figure in the distance where it's a ghost-like shape. It pops out of the bushes and everybody screams, ah! And the bear says, see, I told you the woods were no good. We see this ghost-like figure sort of creeping out of the shadows. And then suddenly pops up the sloth. Hi, sorry I'm late. I missed the bus. <laughs> My mom had to drive me. Everyone's saying, oh, and the counselor says, welcome, have a seat. We're making s'mores. And uh, the, the sloth says, s'mores? You mean I don't have to catch my own food? <laughs> that, now I, I mean, not to <laughs> interrupt or anything, but that sort of sloth ghost to sloth transition is just incredible. So I just wanted to uh, <laughs> acknowledge that publicly as one of, <laughs> one of the funniest things I've ever seen in a, in a book. <laughs> Thanks, Jory. That was it. It was very fun. I was I had a lot of fun with that. Okay, and everyone sitting around the campfire and laughing. They're all finally together. Ha 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 ha. And then <laughs> the night it's getting later, and then the fire's gone out, and everyone's asleep in the cabin. And now the sun is coming up. It's early morning. And here we are inside the cabin. And everyone looks pretty happy, pretty pretty relieved. You know, the sun's coming up. And the bear says, The woods look lovely in the morning light. Nice. And the kangaroo says, my sleeping bag actually kept me pretty warm, nice. And the duck says, I'm excited to get back to the lake today and practice my floating, nice. And the mouse says, they made me a special bed on the floor, nice. <laughs> Bunny says, I didn't need to hop myself to sleep last night. Camp is tiring, but in a good way, nice. 
And the skunk says, I had some great company, so I didn't get scared. Nice. And the mole says, I'm excited for more chess. Nice. And the parrot says, singing helps me get all the talking out of my system. Nice. And the snake said, or says, <laughs> it's easy to make friends when you're kind to others. Nice. Aww. Now they're all walking out into the, into the woods with their hats on. And the mouse says, we're already a team, everybody. And it only took a day. And the counselor is proudly looking at his group and saying, nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, the end. The end. And that is Summer Camp Critter Jitters. Uh, the first time we've read it together. And I think it went really well. I mean, I can't, again, I can't say anything, but I, tell me if it went really well. It know? went really well. And I have, I, I okay. mean, I'm, I, are you asking me? Because yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm so glad I, I pulled the book off of my daughter's top bunk um, before this event because I, I don't think I would have been able to read those little, <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of surprised I was able to write them because I, I could barely see them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was oh, such a good yeah. reading. I, I, I enjoyed that a lot. And um, so I figure, even though I won't be able to see it, I mean, do you feel like um, you want to do a little, a little illustration drawing demo? Yeah, I can do some drawings. Um, I think the way that we did this last time, which worked nicely, is we took maybe some audience suggestions and we could sort of talk as yeah. I as I draw them. Um, I love it. So, is there somebody? Yeah. Are, are the, with the green square that's in charge? If, if is there a way we could like sort of take questions <laughs> from the audience about what to draw, <laughs> and I can share my screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, if anyone in the audience wants to list to draw anything specific, you can go ahead and just put it in the chat on the right. And I will go ahead and read those out as they come. So thank Liz, you. Do you have a, just out of curiosity, do you have a favorite um, animal that you go back to just just when you're say, just not even necessarily drawing for a book, just you want to just draw something, you're sitting there, you're doodling. Is there an, what's your go-to animal? Okay, so I'm going to say before I say this, because I was just about to say it and somebody already asked, I, I'm not great at drawing people and I would request that I not draw any people on the fly today because they all just end up looking like Simpsons characters. I worked on the Simpsons <laughs> for a very long time. So if I were to draw Jory, someone has asked that I draw you Jory, it'll, you'll just look like uh, Lenny probably or so one of the characters <laughs> on the Simpsons. Not that you look like Lenny, but like, you know, I just, as an example. Uh, By the way, but, yes. can, I just, can I just say my, my realization and probably you already know this Liz as a person, I don't, I, I don't know if everybody knows that Liz worked on the Simpsons for a long time, but you know, I live in Portland and there was this one day, and I don't know if this is just common knowledge, where I was just sort of walking around a neighborhood and every street <laughs> is a Simpsons name. And, yes. uh, you know, it's like it's like Flanders and it's Lovejoy and it's um, Terwilliger and, uh, you know, every street. And uh, I, then I looked it up later and sure enough, uh, you know, Matt Groening named tons That's of right. characters after the streets here. It was That's so cool. right. Yeah, I know. I, I actually... Yeah. I feel like I knew that and then I went to Portland and saw it for the first time and it was still exciting. I'm like, what? It's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It was really cool. And by the okay. way, if Liz, I see Melissa saying draw Jory. If, if, if she did today, I think it, okay. it would be a drawing of sort of a, a guy sitting in 106 degree um, temperature and, uh, <laughs> and it wouldn't be my <laughs> most flattering <laughs> caricature I've ever had. Okay, so Jory, um, to so, answer your, to answer your question, uh, it, I really love drawing um, sloths. A lot, nice. uh, and that I worked out then. No, yeah, so that yeah, it worked really out. Really worked out really nicely for this book. <laughs> so everyone, before, hopefully, before this book, had you ever thought that ghosts and that shape kind of look like sloths? No, that was a that was a. Um, I don't. You know, it I, it might have been because I did a comic where it might have. I can't remember if the comic was before or after I did that illustration. But it was around. I like doing Halloween comics in October, and I did a comic where a, a sloth is wearing like a um, a mask, like from the movie Screen, Scream, not okay. Screen, <laughs> Screen. Yeah. You know the movie Screen, that terrifying movie sure. about the screen. Oh, I love door. Screen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Screen's amazing. <laughs> Just about a porch. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's so scary. Um, <laughs> I don't even remember what we were talking about. So, oh. so yeah, they, so that was um, sort of where I think that idea came from, but it was just, as I was going, I was like, this might be kind of funny if it looked like a ghost. And so hopefully it worked out and hopefully everyone can see what I'm doing right now. Cause I should be sharing my screen. Um, I know Jory can't see it, but I'm going to just, yeah. I'm just drawing. I'm drawing a, 
We can all see it. Okay, great. I'm gonna draw a sloth as we talk here, and then I will take some more just because we were talking. I'll make. I'm gonna draw a hot sloth. Okay. Okay, I'm um, gonna ask you stuff while you. Yeah, draw. ask me stuff. Ask me stuff. So, like, when you're brainstorming a character, say the sloth, for, or, or when you're brainstorming a book, would you do you start with the visuals usually, or will you start with, um, or does it just depend on the book? Will you start with text and then and then then do the visuals later, or will you start by drawing a character and then developing the book around that drawing? I'd say, so the characters, like actually fleshing out the characters usually comes later, but I'll say when I'm uh, writing a book, I, I do sort of a combination of writing and also like using ideas. I have like, okay, this this is only gonna work if I do this sort of a drawing along with it. So like, it's sort of like I do both at the same time. And it's difficult because sometimes when I have like a pitch or something that I'm showing, I'm like, oh, here's what I'm thinking. It doesn't make sense because I haven't done the drawings yet, but it'll make sense in my head. Like, no, no, trust me, this will be funny because I'm gonna have this drawing <laughs> with it. And hopefully it is. Sometimes maybe they're like, no, this not. But <laughs> but that's, that, that's usually how it's done. I usually like write and then I do parentheses next to every sentence and like have the idea for the illustration um, next to it. That's usually gotcha. what, I, what I do. So I'm just Neat. so you know, draw, I'm 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 drawing a sloth in it, saying I'm hot, and he's got little sweat marks, but he still seems pretty happy. Oh yeah, put him put him in a heat <laughs> dome, like I'm dealing with here. Not okay. not to keep complaining about it, but we're we're in a heat dome. I don't I've never heard that term before today. Um, but that's what we're oh. dealing with. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. that sounds that sounds terrible. It oh, turned out they not... um, built a bunch of houses with no air conditioning because they didn't think we'd need it, and then it, oh. it turns out. Yeah, I have a kind of off the wall question. Maybe, maybe this, um, maybe this will relate though. So, because we were talking about The Simpsons, and it, it feels like such a dreamed up job, but it also feels like somewhat daunt daunting, like walking into it. Um, you yes. know, After it's been sort of this phenomenon, right? So, did you have any sort of jitters? Speaking of jitters and so forth, just like um, before you got there, and and what was it like? Pretty quickly alleviated, or did they like? How did that go for you? So when I got hired, well, so when I, when I applied on The Simpsons, I, uh, I actually was told, I had just gotten rejected from a, an animation program at my college. And so I was uh, told by a friend who worked on The Simpsons, his name's Brad Abelson. He's a family, like a longtime family friend of mine. Uh, he was saying like, oh, you know, The Simpsons is actually hiring right now. And I know that you have some experience with like animating and illustrating like even though you're not you know in you haven't graduated like do you want to try and uh and apply and get the job and at first i said no and looking back i know it was because i was too scared i was scared of all of it i was scared that i wouldn't get the job and it would be two failures in you know one or you know quote unquote failures in one or two weeks i was scared mm -hmm. that i would get the job and i would have to figure out how to do it and so and then also i you know i lived in northern california at the time and i was afraid that of, of moving, you know, my whole life down to Los Angeles. I didn't really know anyone and I didn't have any money or a place to live. And I was only 22 at the time. So I, uh, yes, I definitely have, I was scared from the beginning. I, I eventually was sort of a couple of friends of mine talked to me and said, just, you know, just give it a try. And if you get the job, you'll figure it out from there and it'll be great. And so that's yeah. uh, sort of how it happened. And then my first day of work, I was terrified, uh, because I didn't know how to do the job. I knew the show and I knew how uh, to draw the characters because I spent a lot of time watching the show and just sitting in front of my TV and drawing the characters. Uh, but I didn't know how to do, I didn't know how to animate. I'd never animated a thing in my life. And I was really worried because I was such a super fan and I had stickers all over my car and like a, you know, a Homer Simpson cardboard cutout in my room, although nobody knew that <laughs> at the time. And so I was like, oh, they're gonna think I'm such a nerd Little did I know that everyone who worked there was also a nerd. <laughs> and I mean that I mean that in the best possible way. And everybody, yeah. I mean, people had, you know, people still have like Simpsons, you know, stuffed animals and toys and decorations all over their cubicles. And it's everyone, you know, for the most part, a lot of people who work there work there because they love the show, you know, and so uh every part, every, every part of getting the job and then every second of I'd say the first year or two on the job I was scared gotcha. uh, and uh, you know, kind of, yeah to an, to an outsider it seems almost like camp in a way that you're sort of you're thrown into a mix and you sort of just have to like you know sink or swim really and you, you learn to like get along with everybody and you make instant friends and there's all this activity and it's sort of 
uh, yeah, it just kind of reminds me of my camp days in a way, uh, just to bring it back to camp for a second. Well, but, you're, I mean, yeah. you're right. And like what you said earlier, you know, that, that feeling when you're starting a new thing, uh, whether it's a new job or your first day of, you know, kindergarten, it, it kind of stays with you, at least it has for me, <laughs> that sort of nervous yeah. feeling of like not really knowing what to expect. And then, you know, I told my daughter this, uh, cause she actually had a dance recital this morning and she was saying yesterday that she was nervous. She was like, you know, what if I mess up? And I, I reminded her, I was like, you know, if you mess up, it's okay because it's okay to make mistakes. And remember that everybody else, you know, has the same, for the most part, most likely has the same fears that you do and you're all going to be up there together and it's going to be okay. You know, it's, it's just the way, it's just the way it is and it'll be okay. That's so great. Yeah. That was really, <laughs> that was that sort of camp ethos too, which was just get on stage, try something. You know, and like I was saying, like, even if it's just juggling one ball, throwing it up in the air, even if even if you don't catch it, you try again. And, and uh, there was at this camp that I went to, there was just this very supportive community that would just, you know, the, the idea was like, you get up on stage, just get that experience of what it's like to stand in front of people. And the whole, you know, it wasn't like it was meant to train a, a bunch of people to be on stage for the rest of their life. It was just sort of kind of giving people a little bit of a nudge in the sense of like, here's what it's like to be in front of people. Yeah. It's really not that bad actually once you do it, you know, because it's like that common fear, even with these events and all these things, like where you're just like, Oh boy, you know, I don't, I don't know how it's going <laughs> to go. And, um, but yeah, you just, you just kind of um, get up there on stage, everyone claps and you, you come off stage after you juggle one ball and then you're like, that wasn't so bad. Maybe I'll go again. And, and, uh, you know, that's how it was for me as a kid too. Yeah, you know, yeah. I actually, when I was like, sorry, I'm writing as I'm talking at the same time. Um, what are you writing? I, so I'm, I, act, I just drew a bear juggling and he's saying that wasn't so bad. Oh, uh, that sounds good. <laughs> Poor Jory is like, what are you doing? I'm just drawing like, so I'm drawing, I'm writing down like, what do you guys really think of Jory? <laughs> Write it in the comments. <laughs> um, so I actually took improv uh, you know, I live in Los Angeles. It was not hard to find improv classes. I took it when I was about, uh, like in my late twenties. Uh, I'm going to just go right ahead and let everyone know I was not good at it. I wasn't um, necessarily like, it's, it's one of those things that you've done it before. You know, if, if you think you're funny or you, or like, you know, you can, you can make jokes. I always kind of like thought, Oh, I, I, I can be witty. It, none of that matters. Improv is all about like working with the team and sort of building off of each other's, what everyone else is saying and what they call yes. Anding. Um, right. Anyway, this is all to say that it was one of the most valuable things I ever did, not because I was so great or because it, you know, launched this comedy career for me, <laughs> but because it taught me, like, I never, ever would have gotten on stage in front of people before in a million years, but it taught me that the worst thing that's going to happen, I mean, barring, like, maybe falling off the stage, is you're <laughs> just going to mess up and say something that isn't that funny or, you know, and 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 just kind of look silly, and for me, it that wasn't that wasn't that big of a deal. And it actually totally. really helped me as an anxious person, just kind of get over a lot of my anxiety and just be like, well, you know, I just, you gotta, sometimes you gotta wing it. Sometimes you sign up for an event and you can't see your face on the screen and you just have to <laughs> do what you have to do. It's true. And I feel like those classes, cause I did a little of that too, um, just, just in various places. And, and, uh, uh, I feel like they're really helpful. Kind of like we were just saying, getting up on stage is not necessarily training you to be in, front of people for the rest of your lives is it's more like just being around a group and 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 you know not being totally afraid of it and those improv classes i feel like help you just sort of i mean not to be corny about it but just like improvise in life and like even if yeah. it's just a, a simple sort of going into a, a cafe and bantering a little while you're you know or whatever it is like it's it's just uh, i think i find that really helpful i also worked at an educational nonprofit called 826 Valencia in San Francisco, and it's a writing center. Um, and, and we would always say, you know, it's a writing center for kids and, and they would come in for after school tutoring and um, field trips in the morning and classes at night and so forth. And the idea was if, if those kids wanted to go on and become professional writers, amazing. But the idea wasn't necessarily to make everyone a professional writer. It was just giving them those tools and skills to be able to uh, write, you know, uh, like, strong emails if they needed to or or you know great thank you notes or whatever it is or create you know original stories and and go on to a, a life of writing for a living but um yeah all these different things i feel like are just great components to sort of get when you're 
uh, you know, a kid uh, yeah. getting, up in front of, getting up in front of people, being able to improvise with people, being able to write, um, you know, strong, strong things. And yeah, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit. I also, uh, I'm also having a, a little bit of heat stroke. So anyway, back to you, Liz. <laughs> no, you're fine. I'm just, oh, you know, right. I'm, draw I'm drawing this whole time as you're, as you're talking. I'm just, I've, I've drawn a bunch of animals here. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's so great. Um, yeah, I was gonna, um, my my last thing that I had planned was uh, at some point, I brought these three clementines into the room and uh, I will do a quick, <laughs> I taught this uh, for a long time uh, when I was a counselor at this at Camp Winter Rambo where Max knows Natalie and I know Natalie as well. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and and her sister, Nicole as well, right Max, um, if you're still there. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I will show you the viewer how to juggle in a, a very concise 30 second manner that you'll be able to take and juggle forever. And by the way, I'm not sure that it's totally come in handy for me other than um, right now. So <laughs> while, while Liz draws. I'm actually, I, I mean, unless anybody has like a last minute uh, thing, I'm happy to stop sharing and I, cause I'm dying to see you juggle. I don't know how to juggle. I'm just going to answer uh, John Ossoff's question. Hi, John, real quick. Uh, he's asking if I ever doodle on napkins when I'm at restaurants. And I absolutely, I don't as much anymore. Um, I mean, I don't really go to restaurants <laughs> anymore. So maybe that's why. <laughs> but I, that was definitely um, something I did a lot uh, when I was, uh, before I started doing my comics, that sort of, sort of made me want to do more of my own stuff because I would draw little jokes based on whatever anyone was talking about. Like if I was with a group of friends, sort of like I was just doing now, somebody would say something and I would sort of illustrate along with whatever anybody was saying. So, um, so yes, that is a yes. I definitely did that. <laughs> okay, we're back. You can, we can see you now, Jory. You really? can't see you. You can't see you, but we can see you. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, hey, everyone. It's good to see. It's good to be seen. Um, <laughs> so the, the, the thing that, I, like I was saying, I taught for, for ages, actually, at, at this camp, Camp Winter Rainbow, um, which was channeled into this later was uh, was juggling and songwriting. By the way, I did songwriting, but um, juggling was this thing. So I brought three clementines, and uh, so everyone, run and get your clementines real quick. <laughs> Let me just uh, I'll watch the chat, and once everyone has three clementines, got it. All right, everyone's ready. What about pineapples? So this, Do pineapples work? <laughs> no. Gotta be careful with pineapples. Okay. okay? You wanna, They're so pointy. You <laughs> yeah, de-needle the each needle first, okay. and then yes, they work. All right, clementines. This is what you do with three clementines. This is how you juggle. Um, usually, this will be over a, uh, like a fifty-minute class, but I'm gonna I'm gonna condense it down to thirty seconds. Here's what you do. So you take one clementine, and by the way, I should say they don't have to be clementines. You know, they could be other <laughs> cuties. They could be cuties, probably. Yes, absolutely. They could be. Um, they could, only those two things. All right, here we go. So take one clementine, and the idea is, and tell me if you can see this because I can't see myself. Yeah, we you can see throw it. You want to throw it eye level for about 500 throws, okay? So that's what you're going to do with one clementine. Then okay. you're going to take your second clementine after you do 500 throws, and you get that, you get that one clementine going eye level, and you try, to, you try to make it exactly eye level, and it won't always work out that way. You take two. And now this is what's called throw, throw, catch, catch. You're gonna throw one clementine, and when it hits its peak, it's about to drop. You throw the next clementine under it, and that's the second throw. It goes like this, throw, throw, catch, catch. I'll do it again. Throw, throw, catch, catch. You see it? Ooh, throw, yeah. throw, catch, catch. Good. Now, you're gonna take your third clementine after you do throw, throw, catch, catch, say 500 times. You put two clementines in one hand, one clementine in another hand. You're gonna start with the hand that has two in it. And it's just like the throw, throw, catch, catch that you've been doing for 500 throws. All it is, is one more throw out of the hand that has two in it. So you go throw, throw, throw. I'll do it again. Two hands. I mean, two clementines. Throw, <laughs> throw, throw, right? So then all you do after that, throw, 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 is you just keep throwing them forever. What? And this would be really wow. cool, by the way if uh, some like cool guitar music kicked in and then this event just faded out on this, but I guess we didn't, <laughs> we didn't plan that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how you juggle three clementines and I'm gonna eat all three of these after this event. <laughs> Yay, 
<laughs> I was Thank trying so to reach my phone to get some some guitar music, but that just, just didn't happen. Uh, I actually like I've never really seen a juggling demonstration before, and the way you just throw it, just if you just keep throwing, that makes so much sense. I've never yeah, just I've keep never throwing. Done. Yeah, all right, just keep throwing. And by the way, I brought four. I'm not I'm not gonna keep going with with this whole thing that's uh, not helpful to anybody right now. But um, four <laughs> is just two in each hand, so you don't even cross them. And then five the odd numbers cross again. All right, so that's the juggling demo. I learned it, I brought a little picture of me. I learned that when I was about this age Aww. right here. Oh. Little me. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, you that's can do that when you're that age? That's amazing. Hey Liz, I can see you now, that's weird. You can? You just faded in, but I can't see me, but that's okay because I feel like we've, <laughs> I feel like we've done, I don't ungrade ourselves. Where is it? <laughs> Are we supposed Maybe to? we could get. <laughs> Should we answer some questions? Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put lip gloss on. Sorry, everybody. Uh, yeah, we can answer some questions. Water. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We, oh, Kate says so impressive. Thank you, Kate. I mean, honestly, Thanks, Kate. Um, you're the best. Kate is our editor, Kate Harrison, and uh, she's just so wonderful to work with. Such a lovely, funny, amazing uh, editor and person. Yes. And uh, Liz and I have now worked with her on not to mention these books again <laughs> that Romans has. Can somebody please scratch my back? First day Critter Jitters, and of course, Summer Camp Critter Jitters. Yes, which I'm gonna use to defend myself while we <laughs> answer any questions. Kate, you might be the only, um, you might be the only question asker. So if you have anything you, you wanna know, know, including like, a, <laughs> uh, Kate, it would be great if you could just, no pressure or anything. Um, Joy, I can ask you, I have a question for you. This has nothing to do with anything we're talking about, but have you ever seen a video of someone juggling from above? Oh, that's a good question. I think there's so, a, you know. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Well, there's a video that was going around Twitter that was, um, you know, someone juggling from above, like as if the camera was right above them. And it's crazy because the, the, the things that they're juggling don't, they just kind of like, you can't see what I'm doing because you can't see me, but they just kind of like slide over each other. And it's like, they're stationary. Wow. It's really fascinating. I'll send it to you later. Everybody else at home, you should check it out. You should <laughs> check it out. Yeah. We'll send you, everyone else at home, we'll send you some YouTube clips that you should check yeah, out. Yeah. Well, and uh, some memes like at, you know, around midnight, if that's cool, we'll send you some memes. <laughs> Some gifts. I will say, just as a as a uh, note on that camp that I went to, I mean, I was I was definitely a person who dabbled in all the things. So that it it would teach like you know all these circus skills, right? The Camp One Rainbow taught stilt walking and unicycle and tightrope and cloud swing and and all these different things. And I knew a little bit of of each sort of thing. I went up on stilts a little bit and I learned to unicycle enough and so forth. But some people there, I mean, pursued it to the, it's like fullest extent. Like I knew a guy who regularly juggled nine objects. It was, uh, I don't know if that's a, any sort of world record, but I've never seen anything like that. And- uh, No, I, 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 this is the first time I've seen someone juggle three three clementines. So I'm very <laughs> impressed by that. <laughs> oh, we Looks got like a question from Kate, Kate Harrison. Question. All right, you, uh, you can, I, I feel like, um, you go first. You go oh, this first. Is for me. This is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna give this one to you, Liz, but actually, I have to answer it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Kate's Kate's question is: Liz said she's a bear, and Mole is a camper. And who were and are you, Jory? I mean, I will say first of all, the, I think the easy answer is there's a piece of me in all of these characters because you know yeah. I definitely, for instance, with the duck, I thought that was the duck. Um, by the way, is the new character in the book or in the sequel? If you've seen first day critter jitters the book about the first day of school there's no ducks and um we added a duck because we thought it was super funny that a duck didn't know how to swim yes but that was actually you know the swimming lessons at camp were not something that i expected when i went there but there was this lake and uh it was a i will say it's a lovely camp it was for me when i first got there it was a scary lake <laughs> it was it was not a lake where you could see um, just about anything, including like when you got in, you couldn't see your feet. I mean, it was just, oh, it yeah. was just a lot of marshes and stuff. It's just a, a lake in the middle of Camp the countryside. Cri Camp Crystal Lake, was that the one? <laughs> Sorry, I did not mean to interrupt you for that stupid joke. Go ahead, you keep talking. Not <laughs> that was good, that was good, that was good. So I think that there was a part of me like that, Kate, uh, about, uh, you know, just kind of getting really comfortable and not to not to uh 
uh, brag or anything, but I got really comfortable in the sense that I eventually did this thing at that camp called a Lake Master Test, where you swim five times around it and they give you a, a little prize and stuff. So that was, that wow. was it. Um, I, I, I also, thank you, Liz. I also, I will say, and uh, anybody who's been around me for like 10 seconds will recognize the bunny in me, actually. I am unable to really sit still, including mm. just sitting on the couch. Like my legs are always sort of shaking. Um, I'm unaware of it until somebody will point it out in annoyance. You know, like um, I've that been helps, in cars yeah. in the back. Yeah, <laughs> I've been in cars in the back seat where the driver is like, could you stop? Um, you know, because oh. my legs are just just shaking. And um, so, yeah, I think I, I've always had this sort of um, uh, just an abundance of energy that is released through, you know, just sitting there, sitting there, like with my legs shaking and stuff that all through school. And uh, but I will say, you know, going to a place like camp where you just run around in, in the summertime, it's it's a great, great place. And just like at the end, you know, camp is tiring in a good way. I always thought that toward the end of, you know, say the first or second day when typically you're kind of just adjusting and, and a lot of there's a lot of homesickness and stuff. Mm. But you're almost too tired at that point at a sleepaway camp to be to be too homesick. It, you just camp is tiring in a good way. They you know, it's just class, class, lake, you know, activity um, at night and then you go to bed and you're just so you're just tired. out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my daughter. My daughter this past week, you know, after her her week of of hiking camp, like usually she goes to bed at around eight, and we can hear her upstairs jumping off of her bunk bed and grabbing books. She loves reading in bed, and so she'd like jump back on her bunk huh. bed. She's just jumping, jumping, jumping. But she would go to bed, and it would be just silent. And my husband and I would be like, "Should we go check on her?" <laughs> she, but she was just asleep because <laughs> she was so tired. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Um, yeah, it was good. So, um, what were the outtakes of drawing your very first parts? <laughs> I, okay, is that so from Kate? that's from Kate. That's from I'll Kate. say that um, <laughs> my specialty is sort of like line and characters and like simple, simple drawing. So when it comes to backgrounds and, and I guess we could call a far, a special effect, it, it it takes a lot of trial and error for me because I'm not I'm not very good at doing stuff like that normally. So I will say that it's all about choosing the right brush and choosing the right, right opacity. So I did a bunch of layers in Photoshop and I just kind of like started making like cloud shapes. And then I started with sort of a solid line and I uh, switched to a like a soft edge brush. So it was a little bit less like defined. And then I would just lower the opacity. So it was sort of see-through and then just do layers of different, you know, opacities of, of, of fart clouds basically. <laughs> and so, yeah, that, that, it was a little bit of a, like, I don't know how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna do this, but. Yeah, it was good. My first fart. I think it. I think it went. It was a learning experience. I think it went well. <laughs> I think you nailed it. Thanks. So, yeah, that's, that's all I can say. And, yeah, uh, I feel like. Um, oh yeah, it's it's noon. It's midnight. I almost said it's midnight, and it's not midnight. <laughs> yeah. Max, what are you? Uh, how are you feeling about uh, any other questions or anything? I don't see any other questions, so we could go ahead and wrap it up here. That's what you two would like. Jory, it's just been us here talking to each other the whole time. <laughs> I know, it's yeah. great. Well, I, I think, I, think uh, I feel really good about this and I feel like um, I just want to thank Romans one more time and Matt, yes. thank you for inviting us. You, your bookstore is incredible. I wish I got down there more. I want to come down and, and, and go to your store with Liz and walk yeah, around. Yeah, let's do and, it. Uh, it's great. And like pop out and scare people and stuff. Uh -huh. I don't know. It's <laughs> Um, but thank you so much for having us and, uh, thank you for everyone for showing up and, and yeah, uh, thanks everybody. Yeah. I, yeah. Thank you, know, Jory. Next time I'd love to see any of you, um, but I can't, but, uh, <laughs> maybe next time. Um, thank you all. And, uh, yeah, it's just been, it's just been a blast and I'm so excited for this book and all of our books that we've done together, Liz, and I'm so lucky to get to work with you. So yes. Likewise, Jory, you're the best. And you, that was, you did a great job. That would, uh, what you did with the book and what you did today, cause it would have been very difficult sitting in a room and looking at nothing and talking to a lot of people. <laughs> so thank you so much. You were wonderful. Yeah, so it was everybody. very essential. I will say yeah. it's, definitely, it's definitely changed me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Liz, Jory, thank you both so much. That was wonderful. Thank I you so much. I hope everyone in the audience had a great time. Uh, again, if you would like to buy their book, click that green button down below. But with all that out of the way, I hope you all have a good day. Thank you. Thank, right, thank you so you much, everyone.